This is Skip with the WSGF and today we're going to look at the Club 3D USB 3.0 to 4K display port adapter. This is model number CSV2302. This is a pre-production model. Um, it's a very nondescript uh, small plastic box. You can see by way of comparison here. Here it is to a deck of cards. It's slightly smaller in every direction to a deck of cards so it's not big at all, not obtrusive in any way, and simply put, a passive little piece of plastic. On one side, you have a DisplayPort 1.2 um, female plug here. On the other side, you have the USB 3.0 micro B, this ugly little flat one that's used uh, for some smartphone charging and such. So one of the things we want to talk about is why would you use this? Why would you want this adapter? Why would you add it on? Um, on the Club 3D website, they do um, a lot of marketing and a lot of talk of using a ultra notebook, you know, that may have a uh, USB 3.0 output, but not a high res video output like DisplayPort 1.2. Maybe it only has HDMI out um, or something similar. And so this is a great option if you have some sort of ultra portable uh, whether it's a small notebook or potentially even a tablet or a MacBook Air or anything with USB 3.0 that you want to add another display to. Um, I did reach out to Club 3D and inquire about where is the video being generated? You know, this is a very small box. It's not powered at all. There's no heat being produced. So, you know, is there a little GPU on here? Is there any RAM in here? Um, how is all that being allocated? And what they came back and told me was, that all of the processing is done on your main GPU. This basically creates and enumerates a new adapter, um, a new output. Considering that the GPU is doing all of the heavy lifting, if you want to use it for something like Photoshop or video editing or even some gaming, and I did test that a little bit, um, you will get the full GPU acceleration. So you're not left with one piece here completely hamstrung so I tested the unit on both a Windows-based laptop and a um, Apple laptop for the Windows-based one. It's a very small 11-inch screen notebook that I have for my day job that I've historically had plugged into a 4K uh, display panel. Originally, I had it plugged into the Dell 30 Hertz panel, which actually worked well because the notebook and its docking station only had DisplayPort 1.1. When I upgraded the panel to the Samsung 60 Hertz 4K display that I have now, um, I couldn't force the Intel chipset, the graphics chipset, to do just 30 Hertz at the 4K resolution. So I was left running at 2560 by 1440p. Not what I wanted at all to be able to look at spreadsheets and email and PowerPoint and all kinds of things all at once on, on the panel. So when Club 3D offered this, uh, for review, I thought it would be a great option to see if I could get back to using a 4K resolution and uh, force that on the notebook. The unit itself comes with a uh, driver install disk. There are updated drivers that you can download through the Club 3D website. It's a little bit convoluted on how to get to them. Uh, they link them to an FTP site, so if you're not running a browser that has good FTP support, it can be difficult to download them, but they do link you uh, through to the OEM for the chipset where you can get them there. Um, once I got the new driver downloaded, I went to install it and I started getting some error messages out of Windows that my USB 3.0 Intel chipset may not be compatible or it may be out of date um, and it needed to be updated. And so I went through all of the different iterations to try to do that. It was never able to successfully update those chipset drivers for whatever reason. Um, at some point, I just decided to bail on it and say, uh, I got you, I understand, I accept the risk, and just push through with the installation, and it worked fine. So if you do get one of these and install it and turn out to say uh, that you get some USB 3.0 errors or incompatibilities, um, just try and push through and see if that'll work for you. It did for me on quite an old laptop, I would say, almost three years old at this point. The adapter worked really well. Um, I could instantly configure to 30 hertz at 4K. Um, I know that that is not optimal in any sense of gaming or any of that type of thing. But from a productivity standpoint, I really don't mind the 30 hertz. Um, I've never had an issue with 
uh, the lower refresh rate or response, updating the sensitivity on the mouse itself, and then uh, the speed in the mouse driver, I'm able to overcome that and just work naturally. From that productivity standpoint, it's worked great. I've had absolutely zero problems, and it's been flawless, really. As a second test, I hooked it into my Retina MacBook Pro, the first iteration of that that Apple came out with that I use as my daily driver here at home. Um, again, I grabbed the driver through the Club 3D website. Again, that could be a little easier. I'm running Mavericks. I haven't upgraded to Yosemite yet. Saw it as an additional display, hooked it up. I could do 4K, I could uh, resize the resolution or whatever I wanted, and it simply worked. I also tested this on my normal gaming rig, on the um, AMD FX9590 with the Radeon R9295 plugged in. Considering how it's enumerating an additional driver uh, separately from the GPU, I wouldn't consider this as an option to create like an affinity group, but if for some reason your graphics card, you ran out of outputs and you needed an alternate display, an additional display, an accessory display, or if you were doing video editing and wanted a monitor to showcase uh, your outputs. So say on your other screens, you've got Adobe Photoshop working or InDesign or Adobe Premiere or uh, Sony Vegas or whatever else that you're using for video editing, but you needed that alternate monitor to actually preview your output, then this would be a great way to do that. 4K video at 30 Hertz worked flawlessly. Um, anything I threw at it, whether it was ripped from a Blu-ray playing 4K video off of YouTube or Netflix. Everything worked great. Uh, so I did talk with Club 3D about your ability to game on this or game through this. Considering that it's using your full GPU for all the heavy lifting and all the horsepower, uh, they had told me that they had been able to game up to like 1080p. So I decided to test uh, the Shadows of Mordor title, the, the new one that's out, and run it at 1440p and uh, see what kind of frame rates we could get through it, see what we could push through it. The first thing that I found, and I, I tested several titles with this, so it's not unique to uh, Shadows of Mordor itself, is that this thing really chokes, I mean, to the point of becoming a slideshow or just locking if the game is running in full screen. So if for some reason you had something else going on on your other monitors and wanted to game through this, you're going to have to do it through windowed uh, full screen windowed, borderless windowed, that kind of thing. But once you do that, it actually works pretty well. I ran testing on very high settings with Shadows of Mordor with their benchmark program. The, the box itself when I ran, I averaged just under 60 frames a second at like 58 and a half, 59 frames a second through this with the borderless windowed full screen with a minimum of 40 frames per second and a max of 83 frames per second on this unit when doing their, their built-in benchmark. When I ran the same benchmark windowed full screen borderless off the GPU itself, I got about two to three frames better across the board. So going through this adapter itself only costs you two or three or so frames at min, max, and average. However, you've got to consider whatever impact you're gonna have going from full screen to uh, borderless window full screen to start with. When I did the same test um, full screen through the GPU natively, again, a Radeon R9 295, so you know about as big a GPU as you could get, at the 2560 by 1440p, my minimums were about 42, 44. Uh, so the minimums were about the same. The averages went from around 60 to just north of 80. So that seems like a huge increase. Um, and it, it, it is on average. When you look at the max, it went from about 83, 84 up to 160. But when you dig into the details of where this max frame rate explodes and causes the average to really jump up, it's at the tail end of the benchmark um, where you have a lot of sky going, where the, the camera's circling around your, your character and it's looking at really nothing but the skybox and the sun and a few clouds. So for whatever reason, um, 
this game itself seems to have a big limitation on the windowed full screen performance on the ultra high end of the frame rate count. But when you look at how the benchmark runs through most of the test and really where it ends up, it's not too bad. It's not too off. Again, all of these differences are going to be game dependent. If you get a game that runs well in borderless windowed full screen versus um, true full screen, then running it through this is not going to really make a big deal to you because you'll only lose a frame or two over running it off the GPU natively. So bottom line is that the unit does what it says it will do and it does it well. Um, it's really no fuss, no muss. It will take your USB 3.0 signal and convert it to a DisplayPort 1.2 um, up to 4K at 30 hertz, anything else lower at 60 hertz. It does it well, it does it with minimal overhead. Um, it uses your full GPU for processing power. So this unlocks all kinds of productivity applications and expansions um, and would really allow you to use a small device, an ultra portable, um, another small form factor desktop device, but expand it to use a large form factor, large resolution display. Um, giving it the recommended award, for me that, that doesn't say that this is bad at all because it does exactly what it says it will do and what it's marketed as doing. Um, I'm hoping that a future iteration will give us 4K at 60 hertz and hopefully leap that hurdle on full screen gaming. So again, the silver award, the recommended award here um, is highly deserved and it works really well, but here's hope for a future revision of the product that's just that much better.